Hi friends. All right, I've been wanting to do this video because I feel like February is the time of year where most people start to fall off of their routines that they started so strong with in January. Maybe you had fitness goals, health goals, like just life goals. And at this point of the year, it becomes really hard to actually like maintain those if you haven't truly built them into your routine yet. So a few weeks ago, I did like my like 6 a.m. that girl morning routine. I shared all of my goals earlier in the year with you to talk about like how I'm setting myself up for success. So I really wanted to show you like how I'm doing it, what I'm doing every single day and give you a check-in on how I'm personally doing with the goals that I set. Like whether I'm crushing them or failing them because I want that accountability too. Like we're in this together. We are a community, Team Seth, like we have each other's back. So that is what this is for. If you're new to my channel and you haven't seen those videos yet, I'll link them down below. So make sure you guys check those out and hit that subscribe button. But first I want to start with one of the goals that truly is one of the most important for me. And that is my waking up at 6 a.m. Because to be honest, like I am not, I'm not a, <laughs> Have you seen that meme that's like, I'm not a early bird or a night owl. I'm like a tired pigeon. <laughs> that's how I feel. Maybe it's hypothyroidism, whatever. I've always been like, a, I'm not a super early morning person. I'm not a super late morning person. I do really well in the middle of the day, but I've continuously worked to get my morning routine earlier, like starting earlier. So for a long time, that was like 8 a.m. Then it was 7.30 and 7. And I've been waking up at like 6.30 for a while now, but I wanted to make it six because I feel like that will truly give me just that extra half hour to accomplish even more. So if you guys watched that 6 a.m. routine, I talked about how I was still at 6.30 and I was trying to creep like a couple, like 15 minutes each week to try to get down to 6 a.m., not do it overnight. And I can say like, I'm there, you guys. Not every single day, there are still some days where I'm like, well, I don't have to get up, but it's been a lot easier for me to wake up at 6 a.m. And I just like, I get so much more done in a day. Like I feel so much more accomplished when I have that morning time because it's quiet. Ryan's still asleep. Our team isn't on yet. It's not me like working, like I'm not doing like any serious work yet, but it's having time for myself and I really feel like even though it's only been, you know, a couple weeks, having that time for myself in the morning has completely transformed the rest of my day, how productive I am, how I feel, my confidence, my energy levels, all of it. So if you're trying to make a morning routine part of your routine for this year, again, don't go from like, I wake up at eight to I wake up at six every day, but try to take chunks like 15 minutes or so every few days or once a week and take yourself back each week and you will get there and i promise you you will be so happy you did if you follow me on instagram you guys also know at the end of january by the way if you don't follow me on instagram make sure you go follow i'll put a link down below but anyway at the end of january i set some new goals for myself and i always do them in like month block so like 30 days usually is like my go-to to build those new habits. And I really just wanted to have something to help keep me consistent and motivated. And as I went into February, cause like I said, like this is where usually people get like, ah. Um, but one of those was adding kombucha back into my routine. So I have drank kombucha like my entire life. My mom's sister like make kombucha. I have always been a Synergy raw kombucha girl. Like that is a kombucha I drink period, end of story. Anyway, I wanted to bring it back in because I just realized I hadn't been drinking it as regularly for a long time. And there's a lot of things that I'm like, huh, I wonder if that's because I'm not having that anymore. Kombucha is amazing. Like the Synergy Raw Kombucha has 9 billion living probiotics in it. And as someone with hypothyroidism, like gut health, digestion, immunity, all of those things, like that all starts in your gut, right? So you need probiotics for that. So I was looking at like, okay, am I having a lot of raw foods? Am I having enough probiotics. So bringing the kombucha back in, I really wanted to see how I started to feel if I had it every single day. And today is actually world kombucha day, which is super exciting. So if you haven't tried kombucha, this is your sign to go for it. And if you love it like me and you just need a reason to celebrate on a Monday, get it girl. Okay, but the very exciting thing is Synergy Raw Kombucha is launching this peach paradise. And I just sipped it. I was going to wait for you guys, but I couldn't do it. It's so freaking good. I'm gonna have some more. Like, it's just so good. Everything is raw, it's real, it's organic. Like, it is amazing, you guys. And to launch this flavor on World Kombucha Day is so cool. But the thing I have to say I have felt the most is truly in just my overall like digestion. Cause when your digestion and your gut is healthy and you're going to the bathroom, regularity, you guys know I struggle with this. I have been 
much more regular since having the kombucha every single day. Then you feel more energized, you sleep better, you don't feel as fatigued, like all of those things play into it. And it's funny because I really didn't know like would I really feel much or is it just like, oh, I know I'm doing something good for myself, but I really feel a lot better. So. I love when you can look back on some habit that you've added into your routine and be like, oh yeah, like I physically and mentally feel that and I want to continue it because then you like fall in love with the process and that's what keeps you motivated to keep doing it. Obviously I love food, I love beverages, so to be able to like have something that's easy for me to do in my routine that I enjoy is great. Like it just makes it easier. And just like with LSF Nutrition, you guys, same thing. Like this gives me like a moment in my day to kind of pause and just enjoy something. Like it's great, it's delicious, it's easy. And I will say if you are new to kombucha or if you've been like, I know a lot of you will message me and be like, I don't know what flavor to try. Like I've tried some and I don't know if I love it. This Peach Paradise is like, it's so good. And the reason I always recommend the Synergy Raw Kombucha is because they don't add any of those sugars to it and a lot of brands do. So make sure like you're getting like the real deal. Real, it's raw, it's, it's just the best. And to be able to know that you're getting those living probiotics in your gut, it is hard to do. We need those raw foods and whether you have hypo or not, your gut like really does control everything. So that is like a super easy way to make sure you are taking care of your body from the inside out. Okay, this is a goal that I actually kept private. Um, I didn't really talk about it outwardly at all, but I had it in my goals planner and I thought it'd be something that you guys would find interesting. I don't know why I didn't really share it, but anyway, I wanted to start focusing on like syncing my workouts with my cycle and doing more phase-based training using the Love Sweat Fitness app. So what that means is basically like as you go through your cycle, like our menstrual, like, you know, menstrual cycle. Why is that weird to say? Our menstrual cycle, it's fine. As you go through your cycle, there are changes that happen in your hormones that can impact your ability to build muscle, your energy levels, as we know, like PMS, all that stuff, right? So I wanted to really be more mindful of that and pay attention. And the great thing about the Love Seven is app is that like you can actually like adjust your workouts super easily based on how you're feeling and not ever feel like you can't get your workouts in. Obviously, depending on physically how you are doing, you may just need a rest day, right? That happens, but you can always make little tweaks and adjustments. So I'm just gonna give you guys a really quick breakdown of this because I think it's super interesting. So your cycle really starts like the first day of your period. So that menstruation period, which is usually about seven days or so, we have this like spike in testosterone, which means our body is like primed to build muscle during that time. So although you might not feel like working out, obviously listen to your body. And this is true also as it goes into the follicular phase, um, we'll get into it, but just keep that in mind. So maybe you have a day or two where you're not really feeling it, but what I like to do in my app is just go slow. So if I have a leg and booty day, I just slow it down. Maybe I decrease my weight a little bit if I need to, otherwise I'll stick with my normal weights, but I usually like to move like fairly fast through the workouts. So I'm just gonna slow it down a little bit, maybe add a little extra weight sometimes, but the key for me during this time is to make sure I'm getting plenty of protein. So really think about this whole time period as like the first two weeks. So you start your period, that's like a week, and the week after, the cool thing is the week after, especially your period, so one week, we're talking about like day eight to 14, usually have a big spike in estrogen and your energy levels like really go up. So this is a great time to go faster through your workouts, maybe add more hits and swap them out for some videos if you want to. Like I'll swap out for some videos too during week one if I'm like wanting to slow it down a little bit more, like maybe do like a yoga. But in week two, I'm like, Go. So then I'll do a lot more hit. I'll move much faster during my circuits of the app workouts. And I'll just usually reduce the weight during that time so that I'm like increasing my energy and my efficiency and like being able to burn faster more. And then usually when ovulation hits, which is around day like 14, 15, then I usually will slow it down a little bit. So I'll do a more low intensity. This is where I really like to swap in some of my yoga videos or bar videos but just kind of like chill it out a little bit again. Um, so lighter weights, lighter intensity. And to me, that usually feels really, really good. And then when you're PMSing, that's your luteal phase, that is when like you usually will feel your worst, right? So not when you're actually on your period, maybe you have cramps a little bit, but like the luteal phase is when you're kind of just like, <laughs> like everything feels sluggish and you feel puffy and all of that stuff. So during that time, 
I will just listen to my body. I like to do a lot more cardio during that time. Again, lighter weights and slowing it down. But I think the key things to really keep in mind are the fact that those first two weeks, you are like ready to build muscle. So you're gonna wanna increase your weights. Even if you go really, really slow, that's fine. But increase your weight and make sure you get lots and lots and lots of protein. And then during that luteal phase when you're PMSing, Miss Congeniality is your best friend. I mean, she's always your best friend and you want that to build because it really will help build and balance your hormones in general. But I usually will do an extra scoop during that PMS phase to really help me feel my absolute best. Do you guys notice anything? Oh crap. <laughs> I'm just gonna try to talk so normal and be like, do you guys notice anything different? Okay, when I get in my own head, I start lisping a lot, but truly, I feel like I don't talk like this when I'm not on camera for the first time with my Invisalign in, you guys. Um, so if you watched my vlog a few weeks ago, you know I had, a, it was a little dramatic at first. I just, I have a lot of dental anxiety, but I go to Parker Hale's dentistry. They are so amazing. You guys saw how just like, I was gonna say loving, it was love. It was like how nurturing and kind they are. The office is so incredible, but I finally got my actual Invisalign and I'm doing it. So there's this cool little thing, it's called a munchie <laughs> that I chew on just to help like press it in. And I change them out every single week. I have the whole box of all of them. And then I like send them photos and check in with them and stuff. But it's been so great. Dr. Hales is my doctor or my like dentist. And he has been amazing, available, like always to answer any questions I have. I'm just so proud of myself for actually doing it, you guys. It's something I've talked about doing for years and years. And I'm finally here. So truly like it is so easy. It's very comfortable. I have this little case that I pop them in and out when I need to. I wear them as much as possible. I didn't wear them in the beginning of this video because this is literally my first time filming with them. So I just wanna get comfortable filming with them first. And I've only been wearing them for like a week. So it's still pretty new for me. But I had really like such an easy time. It took a couple minutes to pop them in. They, my teeth were like a little achy the first day, but not bad at all. And I just am happy to know that I'm gonna get all of like, this lower situation figured out for like the long term because they started shifting so much. My retainer was not really holding them. So anyway, I'm just happy we're doing it. Check, it's happening. And I thought it was gonna be in, like, I'd have to have them for way longer, but it's still like only at 14 weeks total. Obviously that could change depending on how my teeth are shifting, but that's not so bad. Okay, I'm gonna keep these last two short because I feel like I've been talking so much. I just have so much to tell you guys about everything. The other goal that I have for this year that so far we have been doing good, but you guys, it's only been one month, so I don't know. February, we don't have anything planned. Ryan and I made a goal for this year that every single month we'd go somewhere for even just one night, even if it was a local staycation, like down the street, whatever. But because we've still been working from home, we're together 24 seven, we work on our business, we work on our relationship, we do all these things. Like we just felt like we just needed to like get out of our space once in a while and like go somewhere. So we went to LA, you guys saw that vlog. We were gonna be going to Aspen this month and we decided it was just like too much logistically with different stuff going on. So I think we're gonna have to do something local again, which is fine. Um, we haven't planned it yet, but we're doing it. And we're gonna continue that every single month. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be some expensive thing, but for us to be able to take money and say like, no, we're taking that time because we know that it's so good for our relationship just to like get out of the house sometimes. So. I'm very happy about that one because we're killing it. It's only been a month though, so one joke. I had to get my phone for you for this one. So my other thing, and this is like not so much a goal, but I think this is what has helped me stay consistent with my goals. Oh yeah, another one I've been doing is wearing my watch every day for my workouts. I take it off after because I'm just like not a watch person, but I've been putting it on every morning for my workouts. Check, we're like almost two months into that. That's the longest I've ever done that. Okay, anyway, so this is what really helps me actually be able to like stay focused on why I'm doing what I'm doing. And if you watch my weight loss story or my updates or anything else, you know I constantly talk about your why. And if you don't have a why that is non-physical, it's gonna be really hard to actually accomplish any goals. So whether your goal is fitness and like nutrition, like you wanna lose weight, you wanna be healthier, whatever it is, like having a deeper meaning 
you want to like, but why is that good? Right? So constantly questioning yourself, like, okay, I want to do this. I want to lose 10 pounds, but why? Well, because I want to feel more comfortable in my clothes, but why? Because when I feel more comfortable in my clothes, I feel more confident, but like, but why is that a good thing? Cause when I'm more confident, I feel better about myself and I am kinder to those people around me. And like, so constantly saying, but, but why is that a good thing? But why is that a good thing? And that'll help get you to your core root of your, like why you're doing something. That's like number one, that's really helped me. And then the other thing is I have on both my computer, <laughs> on my computer and my phone, my vision board that I made on Canva. It was so easy to make. I just took a bunch of photos and literally just like layered on each other and put words. But this to me is precious because I see it every single day and I'm constantly reminded why. Why am I doing these things? Why do I want these things? Like I see it all visually right in front of me and that helps so much. So between that and my goals planner to constantly be able to see like my goals and then why it's important to me, that has been a game changer. Okay, you guys, I feel like this has gone way longer than I thought it was going to be. But anyway, that I could keep going. I feel like I have so many goals for myself. But those are some that have really stood out that I've been super proud of myself. And also just like with things like the kombucha, like where I've really felt a difference. And I feel like that's always helpful to share with you guys because a lot of you are going through similar things to me or things I've gone through. So if it can help you, then like that's amazing. So I want to hear how you're doing with your goals. Again, we're here for each other for accountability. So drop it in the comment. Let me know what one, like what remind me of what your goals were, but then also like how you're doing with them and how I can support you. So if you need extra encouragement, like drop it in there and I will share. And if I don't, then another girl here will. Um, but I do try to get to all of my comments and always respond to you guys. So make sure you tell me what's going on, how you're doing and how I can help. I love you guys so much. I cannot wait to share all the details about our spring challenge, spring slim down, it's coming in March. I'm gonna drop all that next week. So make sure you guys are ready to go. It's gonna be freaking amazing, so much fun. And just again, help us continue to build these healthy habits and routines as we go through the year. All right, love you guys, bye.